What you're about to watch is a completely raw, basically unedited, and basically uncut version of a Lions fan reaction to this week's game for the Detroit Lions. So if you're a fan of this team and you want to join in on the misery and little bit of optimism that we have, go ahead and join this Detroit Lions community by subscribing right here and hitting that bell notification so you don't miss any of the Michigan sports action. Now, without further ado, here's that reaction that you came for. Enjoy. We did it. All right, we did it, guys. Finally, a win in the books. The Detroit Lions go to one and two on the football season. We get the W on the road. Coming into this game, we were a 5.5 point underdog, which uh, for me seemed very high. I predicted, I think, 27 to 24, and we won 26 to 23. So if I'm accurate on that prediction, I think it was around there. Uh, I did pretty well and uh, would have won some money if I bet on the Lions. So I just had a good feeling. I knew that we had, and, and my friend and I feel mentioned this during the live stream of the game. By the way, if you're a Lions fan, make sure you catch those live streams. We're calling the games live. We have a lot of fun on there. We have a lot of fun on this channel in general, covering Detroit Lions football, along with Michigan Wolverines, Detroit Detroit Pistons and Detroit Tigers. But today it's about the Lions getting that first W, baby. Getting it. And so what we mentioned was we were depleted in the secondary once again because of these injuries. And finally, and what's weird about it, we, we did well. And what's weird about it is we're going up against Larry Fitzgerald, who had zero, or he had one reception for zero yards on three targets. So I know he's getting up there in age, but that is pretty excellent uh, when you're talking about your second best threat on the Arizona Cardinals. Now they did have uh, Isabella, Andy Isabella. He caught four receptions for 47 yards and two touchdowns. So pretty good day for him, but still only four receptions. It was basically the DeAndre Hopkins show all day with 10 catches, I think 151 yards he had, but no touchdowns. But for the most part, outside of DeAndre Hopkins, there was a lot of struggles on that Arizona Cardinals offense. Now they drove the ball plenty, but they didn't put up the points they should have given the yardage that they got. So one of the biggest stories of the game on that offensive side of the ball for the Cardinals, obviously, obviously is the three interceptions from Kyler Murray. When you look at Matt Stafford's stats compared to Kyler Murray's, Matt Stafford was like 21 for 33 for 200. 70 yards. Kyler Murray was around 23 for 35 or something like that. And he also had 270 yards. Both had two touchdowns. So what's the biggest difference maker? Well, two touchdowns by the air. Kyler had one by ground as well, where he broke Okuda's ankles pretty bad. Um, but uh, the one difference maker was Matt Stafford took care of the football. Kyler Murray did not. And that has been a big issue for Matt Stafford coming into this game. So, well, I wouldn't say he hasn't had a lot of turnovers. He only had, what, two interceptions, I think. But one was a pick six against the Green Bay Packers, which was a bad time to throw the pick six. And then the other one was a forced throw against the Chicago Bears that gave them the ball in our territory and eventually win the game. So he made it easy for them. Today, Matt Stafford, cool, calm, collective. Nothing too flashy like Phil said during the stream over and over again but got the job done and did what you're supposed to do as a starting quarterback. We mentioned over and over again, the lack of carries for DeAndre Swift. I would like to see that in the future a little bit more, kind of get the guy some working time. Maybe we're, you know, working him in as a rookie, but he had zero carries today. Adrian Peterson averaged 3.6 yards per carry, had 75 yards total. Not a bad day for him. He looked pretty, pretty good once again. Uh, he is 35 years old and still looking pretty sharp. One of the biggest stories, Kenny Galladay's return. He was our leading receiver. He got in the end zone. He did well. We threw the ball to Hawkinson. We threw the ball to Galladay. We got our main receivers involved. And that was one, I, one thing I was preaching all along. We have to get these guys the football. They're our best players. You got to get your best players the ball. Um, all in all, the Lions offense, good. Matt Prater didn't miss a field goal today. Looked good. Sharp as ever. He usually is. He's usually reliable. Only misses this year or 50 plus yarders that were tough field goals for anybody. Some bad really quick, because I'm not going to go too bad. I mean, we won, so I'm not going to be too negative on this one for sure. Um, some bad real quick was obviously that delay of game penalty. That was a very, very bonehead mistake to take a 58-yard field goal, turn it into a 63-yard attempt that we did not attempt, of course. So we had to punt the ball away. And at that time, when the score was 23-20, to 20, I believe, that could have been detrimental and huge and uh, cost us, to say the least. Um, but other than that, 
a lot of good things. We saw Okuda a couple times get uh, get worked or whatever, but again, I'm not going to worry too much about Okuda just yet. He's he's young. He needs time. He went against Devontae Adams the first time around. Now he went against Larry Fitzgerald and DeAndre Hopkins. Next week, if Michael Thomas returns, which it looks like he might, he's getting Michael Thomas a lot. So um, I'm not going to be too critical of him until I really see him develop and actually go against some players that uh, might help out a rookie a little bit better. Also, I would say we were a little bit too Ben don't break against the pass. We did let them kind of, a lot of the yardage that they were gaining weren't very much earned. They were very easy. There were a lot of open receivers all over that, the place. But again, I'm not that mad about that either because we're down to our second string cornerback. So that's something that is a little bit more forgivable, except, especially when you're talking about a team like the Arizona Cardinals who can move the football. The turnovers, while Kyler Murray had three, it's not too impressive for the defense because two of them were unforced. They were bad mistakes by Kyler Murray. He basically threw it right to our guy. And the big thing I want to talk about and the plus for Okuda is his interception was much needed not just for the team at the time obviously because he got up he got us 30 yards and put us in good field position that was huge at a huge time in the game but on top of that it was an excellent break on the ball um, it was an excellent interception to lay out for in general smart by the rookie to get up knowing that he's in the NFL now not in college football get up and run and get a lot of be better field position with that but more so than anything else he needed that for him Jeff Okuda needed that interception for him that could be the moment that sparks things for him personally which in turn sparks things for the Detroit Lions so a lot of good out of a lot of different players today that we got and to be honest with you, this is just one play where DeAndre Swift caught a pass for 19 yards on a little uh, flare out, but uh, I was explaining to my friend Phil during the stream, the way that he burst onto that seam, it was, it was the first time I got to really see DeAndre Swift in open field, and it was uh, something that I am looking forward to seeing in the future. A lot of people aren't gonna take note of that. It was just one play, one simple play where he had a lot of room in general. He didn't do too much, but the burst and the speed that he showed on that one play for me was just a sign of things that I think are going to come and I can't wait. Hawkinson again, reliable as ever. Oh my goodness, the receivers. Wow. There were some falls where Matt, especially up the middle of the field where Matt Stafford would throw behind our receivers. Uh, they did such an excellent job able to haul in. That's another thing I mentioned during the stream is the reliability of the Detroit Lions receivers is very impressive right now. Um, we've had Pettigrew, we've had Ebron, we've had some guys with some drop passes and, and issues in the past. Um, this year we have DeAndre Swift. He dropped the one against Chicago. That's, it, it's, it was a rookie mistake, you know. He was probably uh, probably nervous, to be honest with you. I know he's a professional, but it's the game-winning pass in your first ever game, or game-winning catch in your first ever game, and he dropped it. And then this today he got hit in the back of the numbers, but uh, I still think he has pretty good hands, and we'll find out for sure over time. But on top of that, Kenny Galladay with some excellent catches today, reliable hands. Hawkinson, excellent catches, reliable hands. Almost made that one grab where he hauled out, uh, or completely sprawled out uh, in the first quarter, I believe. So that was, you know, that was pretty impressive and we can depend on him to catch it when it's in his vicinity. Uh, Jesse James caught the ball well today. Marvin Jones with some excellent catches. Marvin Hall with an excellent catch, even though it got called back. There were just a lot of great grabs and, uh, and Danny Amendola, obviously, he's, he's always reliable as well, gonna catch it even with traffic and even with contact. So a lot of good things to, that we get out of our offense, um, out of our receivers. Lastly, the offensive line started off a little shaky, gave up two sacks early, um, gave up a couple more throughout the game. But all in all, I would say we played pretty well in uh, Halapulavate Vitae's return. And all in all, I think it's a good offensive line. I, just, I love our offense. I've said it over and over again, not just in this these videos, but in general, I've said it in other videos where I'm previewing games and stuff like that. Our offense is, is top notch, to be honest with you, especially when they're clicking on all cylinders. And our defense is, is slowly showing that it's very capable of a lot of things. Also, Julian Aquara with the sack today, that's why we drafted him. That is huge. Jamie Collins with the pick. Don't say that Bob Quinn's not making good moves. Don't get mad at him because he's continuing to take these New England Patriot players. A lot of them are, are showing out for us. Amendola, Jamie Collins, there are guys who are playing well that came from New England. There are guys who are playing well in general that came from other acquisitions and especially a lot of our draft picks. I mentioned it throughout this video. I'm going to continue to mention it throughout the year because those guys show up and because Bob Quinn is a good GM. He's made some mistakes draft-wise. A lot of people are apt to do that as GMs. You're gonna miss and you're gonna hit. 
but he hit a lot more than past GMs did. With all that said, the Detroit Lions move to one and two. We get the win for the first time today. I'm going to hurry up and edit this video and pop some bubbly, get some sleep because I've been doing YouTube work all week. If you enjoyed this video and you're a Detroit Lions fan, we would love to have you. We'd love to have you if you're an NFL fan in general. Anytime you're welcome. This is Intermittent Sports where we cover the Detroit Lions, Detroit Tigers, Detroit Pistons, and Michigan Wolverines. Subscribe right here, por favor. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of the action. And until next time, guys, we'll see you then. Go Lions. Winners. Today, at least. Now let's go watch the Packers hopefully lose.